Look, man, we gotta we gotta talk about this. I don't know why this happened. I, I, I look. I think anime is great. I love anime. It's like my favorite, like way to watch things, movies, TV shows, whatever. Like live action, even like manga, whatever. I prefer two D animation over everything else. It it just baffles me how there's such a prevalence in the anime community of like of of just degenerate, like thoughtless people. Maybe it's like a warped perception because of the internet, but it just seems like there's a way higher percentage of like weird people that are anime fans than in just normal society, you know? Uraraka, Todoroki, um, everyone, everyone, just everyone, anyone and everyone. Todoroki. I just think it's a great combination and I love the it's your power line. I would die. Why is this like the default? Why is the default like gay relationships? I don't understand this. Definitely have to say Deku belongs with Bakugo and Todoroki. The three? I thought I liked anime a lot. I'd never go to one of these events, bro. Maybe I might go to Troll, but other than that, never. I just don't get, I don't get what these these fatherless activities, these weeb activities are. I don't, I don't understand the mindset of these people. Like this is this is clearly because there's some reasonable responses in here too, as reasonable as this kind of thing can get. My Hero Academia is like the stupidest anime of all time, but or not the stu it's the stupidest mainstream anime of all time. It's like the dude who, who interviews people is not trying to coerce them into saying all this stuff. He's just taking people and he's not even selectively picking only like the gay degenerate clips. It's just the whole like this whole fan base, the whole my community, my Hero Academia community fan base is such a they're like disappointments really uh deku with bakugo just because... oh there she is there's the like triggly puff looking what did she say because they've been friends ever since they were children and i was distracted by like the penguin waddle but like wait friends since they were children no they were not deku was like a psychopath and they're close or bakugo was like a psychopath i don't understand what she's on even though it's sort of like a love-hate kind of way. No, like, it's just a hate. This is kind of like a troll cosplay, but she's like a normal-looking person. And then look at her. She's she's the first one that said a female. I, I there's there's one part of me that is like I can't stand these people, and I don't want to watch this. But then there's another part of me that's like I must study them for science to understand the psychology of these creatures. What drives these people think about what's going on inside their head? What drives them to think like this? Well, there is only one answer for that, and it is best bro Kirishima, because that's an epic bromance. Who do you- Do they- are they scripting this? This has to be scripted. So, I ship Deku with Baku and Todoroki, because I think they just- she looks like fucking Gollum or like Smeagol or, or whatever his name is. Like, you know, the CGI, the precious, like, you know, the, the, the goblin looking thing. I shoot Deku with no one because <laughs> I don't like him. Ew, why oh. do I get it? <laughs> I ship Deku with Ochako. They're, why are they all so weird? They're all like, they're all like, oh, hey, here's the mic. Take the mic. Oh, thanks. For the, like, why do they, why can't they just like stand like normal people? I just don't understand it. She reminds me of that, that girl in Spongebob that was like, that had the lip attack on Karate Island. It was like the first floor and Sandy had to like fight the first boss. And it was the one with like the huge lips, like the dance squirrel dance. You know that one? That's what she looks like. And I think he's just a cute little asexual icon. And I'm, that's what I think anyway. <laughs> I should deck you with All Might because All Might hasn't like taught him anything. He him that was good. That was good. That's funny. I like this guy. Kinda. Nah, -uh, definitely Todoroki. Cause Toto Deku. That's not a reason. I don't know why they talk like, if people are, they're like walking on eggshells all the time and all they can do is like fake laugh at things that are not even funny. I don't understand this, this area of the community, bro. Or even the whole anime community. I don't get it. Now, people who are disconnected from anime and its fandoms think anime is weird and we only watch it for hentai and porn purposes. They're, they're right. They're absolutely they're right. They're right. Yeah. Let's not act like they're wrong. They're, they're right. But it is. But if you don't know what it is, all you need to know is. Oh. That's why this video is unlisted. You know, I was actually thinking about, I have an idea for, for a way that like, cause 
anime by itself, we talked about this before like a million times, it doesn't make very much money. Like, the industry as a whole doesn't make nearly as much as Hollywood. Obviously, everyone knows that. Uh, but occasionally, an anime will pop off. But even the ones that pop off really don't actually make, like, you know, the the big, big money. I don't know if any animes ever crossed, like, 100 mil or anything like that, you know? Maybe a couple have, but it's, like, regular now for movies to cross, like, the billion-dollar mark. Like, if a, if a Marvel movie, you know, get, makes, like, $400 million, that's considered a failure. And actually, this is, like, how you can get a whole lot of people, like, a lot of hype. It's, like, a guaranteed way, because everyone wants to find, like, little, like, marketing gimmicks or whatever. It's simple. Just copy what Hollywood did. Like, copy that one little gimmick and, uh, and burn it out, run it into the ground, which is the cinematic universe. Um, this is a strategy that can get, like, millions of people, like, a hundred million people watching, like, Serial Experiments Lane type shit, you know? Like, deeper, deeper anime, like what the real core of anime actually is. And all you gotta do is just make a cinematic universe that ties in a bunch of different animes. And it's crazy that no one's done this yet. Like, any time there's any sort of crossover, like, even, like, a light reference, like... Like, Light actually showing up in Death Parade. That shit, fans go crazy. It gets hella views on YouTube. They take it down. It gets hella views again when people re-upload it. Imagine making, like, five different manga. And, like, it's different people making it, but they're all, like, aware of each other's story. In the same way that, like, mangaka are all friends. You know, the guy that makes One Piece is, like, best friends with the guys that make... The guy that makes, like, Hunter Hunter and all stuff. There's, there's no real crossover. And sometimes they take place in, like... I believe, like, Kaguya-sama, Love is War, and Oshinoko takes place in the same universe. But, like, nobody ever talks about it. I guess people, some people may have talked about it, like, when it was getting hyped up because Kaguya-sama is a really popular anime and everyone watched it. They were like, oh, the creator of this is making Oshinoko. But that's really all there was to it. There's no, cro there's no real cinematic universe. But imagine you get, like, five iconic characters because people discuss this all the time oh who would win goku versus saitama imagine you get like top five or not even top five you take five random out of the top 20 recognizable shonen main characters and put them all in the same anime that shit would go crazy that's like easy money bro that's it it's such a, it's such a free idea literally it's a free idea for like tens of millions and maybe hundreds of millions of dollars Maybe. Anime is a Japanese colloquialism which comes from short... <laughs> yeah, Digibro did have those those videos where, I mean, a lot of these, just YouTubers in general now, with everyone making, like, video essays, everyone, made, oh, the rise and fall of whatever, like, everyone so much over-explaining. It's like, get to the meat of the, get to the, why we clicked on the video in the first place. Here's an idea. Avatar The Last Airbender and The Legend of Korra Here's an idea. Avatar The Last Airbender <laughs> is an anime. Fuck you. Fight me. Why do we need to define anime? I realize a video asking this question is somewhat risky, in that it's based upon my own inability to come up with an answer to this question. It For is? Allow me to indulge and point out why, at least as far as I can see, there isn't actually too pressing a need to define anime. Right. There isn't. There really isn't. People who are trying to define anime are not actually trying to define anime. They think they're doing that, and I guess, like, they, they're in practice. But they're really using it as a catalyst, even though they may not realize it. They're using it as a catalyst to either gatekeep or better understand the community or better understand what their tastes should align with or shouldn't align with to, to have better, more thorough discussions with other people in the community and just to get, like, people's general... Because... Th that simple question will spark that very vague discussion, which doesn't matter, but then it'll branch out into other things that actually do matter and, and will impact your, your viewing experience of anime. The question itself, why do people watch anime or, or not why, the question itself of like, what is anime? Like, how do you define anime? That in itself doesn't matter. But in the process of trying, trying to find an answer, there's value to be gained out of it. And that's the whole reason why people ask in the first place, even if they may not even realize that's what they're doing. ...to base definitions upon style. Since there will always be some unforeseen creative rule breaker mm -hmm. or style remixer that comes along and prevents you from creating a clean delineation between those works that do and do not belong. You'll always get... Yeah, there's really no point in actually creating the clean delineation. He's already hammered in that point. I don't know why we need to, you know, keep going. I don't know why he has to, you know, go further into it, but, you know, we get it extremely western style anime and extremely anime style cartoons 
Similarly, definitions based upon region or producer or target audience will prove to be insufficient. As mm -hmm. in this age of globalization, things like outsourcing and strange projects like Shelter, conceived of and produced for a Westerner, Jeff's definition of anime as a movement is a somewhat enticing one. Certainly a novel attempt, and actually one of the better definitions at that, but it still falls short. Deeming anime to be a movement gives things enough vagueness to sidestep some of the problems that come with defining... Yeah, that, that's a much better definition than what people try to say. Anime as a movement is, is like, it's okay, but even still, there's no point in trying to define... Like, trying to find the end result answer in itself, there's no point in that. And so defining it as a movement in itself is stupid because you don't need an answer... But I guess it's a good answer, or a decent answer. An artistic movement is still defined as a tendency or style in art with a specific common philosophy or goal. So you still need to have that set of criteria laid out at some point. All calling it a movement ultimately does is allow you to answer the question, what is anime, with an artistic movement. I guess. I mean, if you're defining artistic movement, then I think that's a lot less... You're, you're, you're shifting the goalpost. It's a lot less of a content, contentious thing to define... And I think most people would ignore the definition if they actually saw like saw it like based on like whatever definition it has on like Merriam-Webster or whatever. They just go like, you know, when you see it, you know. You've answered the question, but only with an ultimately meaningless phrase. Yeah. Because it isn't actually an artistic movement unless you've defined the traits or overarching philosophy that make it a movement. And yet, this definition is being employed specifically to avoid defining. I could, I could. This is not how you would do it, but you could dive deeper into the philosophy of of uh, a more expanded suspension of disbelief if being suspended in disbelief is like being suspended in midair then having a taste for anime is being as light as a feather right that would be like how i would describe it off the top of my head and then you could dive deeper into that and get into like some real philosophical re storytelling related stuff because anime is able to tell different stories because aesthetic is the aesthetic is different, therefore the narrative is different. To have some kind of beginning and end, a set period of time during which it occurs, and that's where the whole individual movements within the greater movement phrasing of Jeff's comes in. So really, one of the better attempts to define anime to date goes about doing so by simply finding a way to circumvent having to concretely define the term. Yeah. Avatar: The Last Airbender and Voltron are series that may scratch the anime itch. And he asserts that they are anime. Right. That they can. Right. The things that scratch the anime itch. The things that people consider to be. Things that the anime community talks about. That's what it is. And as parts of that movement, because they scratch that same itch anime does. That they share a basic appeal with it due to enough common characteristics and seemingly shared design philosophies, and thus should be considered to themselves be anime. I agree. Similarly, Japanese animations like Sazai-san would in his eyes not be anime. Yep, it's not. I don't think it is. Lacking this shared appeal with those works we typically consider anime. This inclusion based upon a similar appeal has some practical benefits. It, it, it does. There's benefits and there's trade-off. There's, there's, you know, downsides as well. I used to actually, like, have, like, a... Every time I make a review on YouTube, it would be, like, S Sora Online dash anime review. And then it would be like what a Spider-Man movie review, and then it would be like the Fable manga review, and then it would be like this book review, and and I was like screw it, let me go all out car review, country review, like race review, like let me go all out, let's like do whatever, just call everything a review. I just make any commentary or anything, I'm just reviewing that thing, channel review, meme review, whatever it might be, right? But it actually got to. Uh, and it was it was partially my fault because it'd be like, hey, I wouldn't want to review the sequel, but I'll just mention it here, or I'll talk about, you know, the anime and the live action adaptation, and I'll rank them together in one video, and I'll give them both the same rating, but then I can't add, like, anime review, whatever, and just for the sake of simplicity, I just... I don't apply any label to anything anymore. I don't go, this is anime, this is a cartoon, this is whatever, this is an anime movie versus this is just a normal movie. I, I don't differentiate between any of the stuff anymore. Now, it's all just... Anime is, is... I just refer to it as, like, the community, just to keep things simple so people know what I'm talking about. But when it comes to, like, the real shit, I don't differentiate anymore. A lot of times, I'll be like, yo, do you watch the show when I'm really talking about an anime... Um, and I'll, ne I'll almost never do it the other way around, but I might, who knows. But on my YouTube, it's just like Gantz and then like 
Fast and Furious. And it just, the titles are just the titles and there's no other words that go along with it. I end up deleting all of them. I don't like the game review video. I don't like any of that stuff anymore. I don't want to differentiate between any of the stuff. The labels to me don't matter so much as like, this is what the art is called. When you look it up, that's what the first thing that comes up. That's all you need to know. And if you're open-minded enough, then really you shouldn't have any qualms about consuming any kind of art. Yeah, things in art forms may not appeal to you, but great art can come from any medium. So personally, I don't think it really matters. I think that you can rank them all on the same scale as well, which is like, that's that comes with its whole host of drawbacks too. There's a segment of the anime fandom, an old school one specifically, for which much or even most of modern anime lacks the appeal of anime. In its early days, when anime was evolving out of the kind of stuff that would be relegated to cartoon status by... And I get that. And if those people don't want to call it anime, they don't have to call it anime. It's just that simple. Um, but then there's a new wave of people who have, you know, adopted the, the the word anime and taken it into their own hands, and they're calling it something else, and I agree with those people. And then eventually some Manly Man action series also coming into play. With the increasing prevalence of anime focused on slice of life and cute girls, that appeal, predicated on a kind of masculine romanticism, faded away. Even if we want to make the arbiters of this taste that a work must appeal to in order to be considered anime those who enjoy modern anime, we run into issues. Most people don't like all anime, and for many of them, there are entire types of anime that they don't enjoy because specific elements central to that type of anime just don't appeal to them. If a work becomes anime because of sharing elements that make anime appeal to people, and can be discounted as being anime for lacking them, then how can we avoid something like sports anime being barred from consideration as anime, since traditionally they have had trouble gaining widespread popularity in the West? Clearly, for not insignificant portions of the anime fanbase, sports anime lack those common points of appeal. Cute Girl series would probably have this issue to an even greater degree, having large portions of the Western anime fandom that are apathetic or actively hostile towards them for once again lacking the appeal of anime. At this point, the only route I see left for this definition to work is if we say that something is anime if it shares appeal with any anime anyone in the anime fandom likes. Uh, this is nah, that's like everything in the world then. ...necessary in order to avoid excluding any given work or subgenre that would be excluded merely because the specific... Right, so... So, defining anime is not a destination. You don't need to go... If you find the definition, if you truly end up on a definition, then you failed. You do everything you possibly can to find it, but the real, the real purpose of asking is so you go on that journey. Like, defining anime is a journey because you try to include some people and then you try to exclude some people and then you try to include some people and you always try to find a balance of, of gatekeeping and, and, you know, inclu and, and growing the, the community. And you get people from people who you intuitively don't want to be a part of it, and you grow the community and, and add more people that you do want to be a part of it. And by striking this own balance in yourself of, I want the community to be as big as possible, yet I want it to be filled with, you know, my standard of quality for who I think should be consuming this kind of art. In, in that process, which, like, that's how you try to define anime. And it's a never-ending process. So people shouldn't, you know, be upset that they can't come up with a definition of anime. And just because you can't come up with the definition doesn't mean it's not worth thinking about. And also, a crazy idea, a definition can be subjective. Everyone is always so focused on like, what is the objective line? You can actually have a subjective definition. You can have a, a, a productive definition where if something is on that blurred line of like, is this anime, is this not anime? Uh, if, you're, if you're in practice having a conversation with someone, because, you know, people in the anime community don't really, like, they're not really social. They don't, like, talk to anybody else. They just talk to themselves. They're all just schizophrenic. But if you're, like, having a conversation with someone, like, if I have a conversation with, like, my brother or whatever, like, what about this? Is this anime? And, like, he'll ask me that. And I'll be like, uh, it's on the line. It's, it's in the blurred line. It's in the blurred area. And he's like, okay, cool. And that's it. That's the end of the conversation. You can have a productive, subjective, blurred line definition, and there's still no problem. It's that 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 shouldn't be a uh, you know disqualify disqualifying factor in a definition is that it has a blurred line. Having to open it up this far would I think mean that SpongeBob would indeed be considered anime. Surely there are some comedy anime fans for whom SpongeBob holds a very similar appeal to the comedy anime they love so much. Absolutely, me included. Except I don't even like any of these comedy anime. I only like SpongeBob. It's a chicken and the egg scenario where something isn't anime unless it's similar to anime, but we can't designate our baseline example as anime without another anime in existence. 
This is more of a logical paradox here, and the answer to it is simply that there's some things we understand for certain to be anime, and thus have our baseline. But that's just the issue with this as a de I don't think that's an issue. That, that, the, your axioms are built on the first anime that you watch. Which for me, I guess, uh, I don't know, you could say it was SAO because that was the first one that I knew was an anime. Uh, you could say it was Naruto because I watched that a little when I was a kid and I kind of knew it was an anime, but I only watched a handful of episodes, maybe like 20, 30 episodes. Uh, you could say it was Avatar Last Airbender because I watched it all the way through, but a lot of people don't consider it to be in it. So it's, it's tough to say, but like all of these things serve as like very, very similar, you know, foundational axioms to go by, which will all lead to the same conclusion, at least in my mind, that Hunter Hunter is anime, SpongeBob is not. Somehow, I just know it when I see it, based off the first few anime that I watched. It relies upon some abstract consensus, some gut idea of what is anime, and doesn't actually define it. Right, and I think the anime community is like pathetic for for abandoning things that require a gut instinct. I think the whole world is pathetic for, for running away from gut instinct conclusions. If you think about it, like those, those are the most beautiful things to think about. Those are the most beautiful parts of life. It's thinking deeply about simple things, things that people think are self-evident. You think really, really deeply about them. Like a kid, you know, that's when the world opens up to you. Why do, do you see the same red that I see? Why is the sky blue? Why do birds have wings and we don't have wings, even though uh, every person says they'd want to fly. You ask them, oh, would you rather, would you want to have wings? Would you want to fly? Is that a superpower that you want? Everyone says yes. Why are we compelled to like uh, take pictures and all this stuff? This like thing that's like very, very new and unnatural and this thing that's only existed for like 100, 150 years or so that, that human beings have never done, no animal has ever done. Why do we feel so compelled and why do we feel like it's so normal? Why do we wear clothes? No other animal wears clothes. Why do we listen to music? Like what evolutionarily, what purpose does music serve? And and it's thinking about these things, thinking about like very, very simple things that, that people just take for granted intuitively and, and they don't question, they don't bother to question it and really thinking deeply about them, that ends up leading you to the most beautiful conclusions about life and the world and yourself and philosophy and, and understanding and, and the universe and all that stuff. It's like those things, those things lead me to, to come up with my own stories that I'm like, oh, wait, this is like so beautiful. Wait a second, they taught us this in religious education. Wait, that's where the religious idea of this comes from. And it all starts piecing together. And, and it's like, it's amazing. And then people go, oh, no, we, ha that's just a gut feeling. You can't, tr you have to rely on the analytical objective reality. Of su you can't, uh, subjective, no, 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 no subjective. Shut the fuck up. Here is exactly why we must search for a definition. Really, it just comes back to those practical benefits that I brought up, I think. What? What do you mean, why we must search for a definition? I thought in the beginning you said there's really no point in having a definition. Why is it now that we must search for a definition? There are a good number of anime fans that Avatar appeals to in the same way that anime appeals to them. And being able to discuss it in the same place as anime is discussed, in and alongside other discussions of anime, would probably improve things, be something that many people enjoy. The problem is that in do- Maybe, maybe. But the only way to really tell is is not by trying to discuss and trying to piece together. It's literally through, let's say, uh, me and 10 other people want to get on that forum and we want to talk about Avatar Last Airbender in the same place. But then 50 other people who are already on that forum go, no, go make your own forum. You're not a part of this community. It, th Avatar Last Airbender is not a part of this community. We don't like it. We only want to talk about these things. We don't, we consider it separate. We might even like it, but we, we consider it separate. You can't talk about that on here. And in the process of the, the social battle that people have in their own minds for I, dominance of ideas, whoever ends up winning is, that idea is what reshapes what the community ends up being. And the new people that join the community accept that and they, they, they form their own ideas within that. And then they you know, push the boundaries and they do whatever. And it's a constantly evolving thing. And if there's enough people that want to talk about Avatar Last Airbender on that forum and they all get kicked out and they go start their own thing, and then that all, that thing becomes so big that it becomes bigger than the original thing, then that original community becomes so small that it dies. This is the new thing now. And that's just how communities in the world work. 
and anime is one of these communities that has that is standing the test of time and evolving. It's been around for like our kind of anime, what we consider to be anime, is like it's been around for I think like eighty years or something like that at least. Fantastic romantic right here is wrong. You don't need to try to find. It's not imperative or it's not even important, even in the slightest, that you have to define anime so that way you can decide. Oh, it would be pro- it would probably be beneficial. What do you mean probably? It would probably be better for people. Well, who's people? Is it the majority of people? Is it, is it like the only way for you to truly know what's better is if these people have their own little fight about it. They have their own little battle about it, you know, in, in subtle ways, paying, you know, proving it with their wallets and things like that and proving it with the numbers and the watch time that these animes get or the shows or whatever. And with discussions and with memes and with just community activity, right? There's no way for you to for you to assert Oh yeah, no. This is better for the community. This would be better for the community if it if it included uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender discussions. The only way it would be better is people is if there were enough people that would already accept it. And if there were already enough people that would accept it, then there would be no reason to even bring that up. Oh, it would be better if we did this, but we're already doing that. Nope. There's no need to change anything or try to define anime. The anime community is already exactly what it needs to be. There's no point in even talking about try, uh, trying to find a definition. I think I've laid out how SpongeBob would also be something that could be discussed in places like our anime if we adopted this policy. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. SpongeBob is secretly crazy deep. Bro, you can you can base your entire morality off SpongeBob and you would be in like the top 10, top 5% of people if you like really took it to heart, you know? You might argue that Spongebob will appeal to far fewer anime fans than Avatar, but so will niche anime like Tonkatsu DJ Agitaro-kun. So exclusion based upon how wide its relevance or interest to anime fans is doesn't really work. I guarantee you that there's more anime fans who care about Overwatch and Game of Thrones than care about Nia Under 7, and who care about those things for reasons very similar to those reasons anime appeals to them. Right, and it's also somewhat shallow for him to, to say, because he didn't go any deeper. He just took one step and he said, Ah, the water's too cold, and then didn't didn't dive in any deeper. A lot of anime fans might also really enjoy SpongeBob more than they enjoy a lot of other anime, and so it it may not be determined by the mass, uh, like the, by the appeal, by the broader appeal of the community, but it is in fact determined by the broader j- consensus of the community because that DJ anime, um, uh, more anime fans, and uh, like you, you can. The, the proof is in the pudding. The proof is in the fact that it that it is considered anime. More anime fans would rather have that on their forum and not, you know, decline it from being on their forum. B- not because that not because they enjoy it more than they enjoy SpongeBob, but because they consider it more like anime, scratching that anime itch than SpongeBob does. And I talked about this more in my um, anime is above cinema video, but yeah. So yeah, no, you can you can dive into that more. On, in there, but that one is sort of like a is sort of like a mother's basement, like beginner level video where I go in and explain everything in depth. Like it's like for for people who really know nothing about about anime or movies or anything like that at all. Eighty percent of the video says basic information that most anime fans already know to be true even if you watch like one or two animes. And I think the practical inability to define anime clearly will unfortunately result in whatever line you come up with being somewhat arbitrary. With all the- Not arbitrary. Things are not either objective or arbitrary. There is a such thing as a subjective, blurred, personal, yet similar to the community, not so deviated from- It's not arbitrary. There's no randomness to it. And it's not like an inability to come up with a definition. No, we all have a definition in our own head. It's difficult to put into words because words actually truly can't really communicate all that much in the grand scheme of things. And I know a lot of people like these people on YouTube wouldn't understand that because words is their best tool for, for communication. But really the, the truly important things to truly communicate, the, the most profound things cannot be communicated with words. And in the same way, you could tell someone this is anime, this is not anime, and not say any words and they pick up on the patterns and they figure it out for themselves. And everyone sort of has their own consensus and as a community, the emergent properties that result in creating the final consensus of what is and is not allowed on these forums, 
that ends up becoming what anime is. I don't see the, there any problem there. I don't see any need to go like, nope, we must find a definition. With this in mind, I just can't see much of a purpose in putting so much effort into accomplishing something so seemingly impossible, when the only tangible benefits I can- What do you mean impossible? It is possible. We already did it. It's done. It's been done. The definition keeps evolving, but we have a definition see that would come from it would be the ability to talk about some more of the things a lot of anime fans care about in a few anime-centric locations where that's currently frowned upon. No, no, because if those people wanted it there, then they wouldn't frown upon it. It's already everything it needs to be. It's just that simple. There's a lot more benefits to supporting me on Patreon. Joining... I don't give a fuck about your Patreon. Artistic narrative is at the forefront. Instead, what we receive is half-hearted clickbait that is kind of pedantic, but not really, and videos promising that she'll be better when YouTube starts acting right. People who do what their niche wants are rewarded with a lot of money from that niche, whereas people who are broad are rewarded with some money from a lot of people. In both cases, you're making money. It's just that one makes what they want and the other doesn't. And in the case of the latter, you need a lot of people on board in order for that broadness to make any money right, back. Right. You, as a consumer, are committing bad consumer practices by letting Lachlan adhere to the algorithm. It's always the same story. I have no money and I need patrons, so I make the most clickbaity content. Gee whiz, I'm so sorry, guys. Please patron me. Lachlan is in a position... It's just a dumb strategy. It's, it's just a dumb, long-term strategy. ...in which she has to apologize to her viewers because enough complaints come in from shilling. And so the patrons she accrues from videos like this are less because she's made a great video that deserves money, but rather because she's made a bad video and is begging for pity. And why does Pedantic want to do this anyway? If she feels forced into being dishonest for the sake of views, why not just get a 9 to right, 5? Right, right. It's going to be... Exactly. That's, that's literally the... the mindset that I tell these people like everybody wants to be a YouTuber and then I'm like I'm like okay uh, what are you trying to do and they're like okay let me try like Mr. Beast style strategy all this stuff and I'm like dude if you don't if you're not doing it because you're passionate about it you're doing it because you think it'll make a lot of money then go do a job that makes a lot of money it's the same thing. Why is it that Pedantic forces herself into poverty when she's not even making the videos she wants? I can understand living uncomfortably when it's for passion, but in her case, she's just halfway doing passion and halfway doing clickbait bullshit that no one cares about. Either you go full shill or you don't. This weird middle ground is only hindering her development as a channel. You know what's crazy? Four years ago this was made? She stopped making videos three years ago, or four years, I guess. Pedantic Romantic is a tranny. This dude is a tranny. And Digibro is also a tranny. We're three for three. Why work? Of course, look at these like shitty ass takes. Gays aren't targeting your kids. Yeah, they fucking are. Well, the marchers are chanting, we're here, we're queer, we're here for your children. Tell, me this. tell me this isn't disgusting. Listen. Like they're not there over here. here. Now listen, this is Dude, honestly this community's fucked. We need old anime and analysis of old anime because that's when people were actually happy making like that's when the anime community was on top. That's when Dizzy Bro was actually like making good videos. And it's like that dude said in that video. Melancholic, masculine in a way, kind of like superhero, masculine like superhero type of anime that really made the community what it was. It was childlike in that way. But like all the fucking like the new shit that that anime makes, it's so weak and pathetic. It's like no wonder this is what the communities turn into. Bathroom or falling all over their titties. Girls are always acting like they hate the guy and beating the shit out of him, even though. Yeah, yeah. Getting lazy with its meta is is giving it too much credit it's been lazy with its meta for fucking as long as i've been born since i've been born and way long way before that too the other day i was watching a fucking shoujo manga adaptation from the year 2000 and a girl gets walked in on in the bath and yells what is this an anime you get the picture this shit is ancient but the weird part is that you get this scene in phantom world where the dude tries to avoid accidentally groping a girl and ends up with his face in her panties instead and i've seen people with the nerve to call this subversive what the fuck? See, I know what it looks like when this trope gets subverted, because I watched this 21-year-old cartoon. Yeah, and a cartoon. 
Yeah, that that's not subversive at all. Neon Genesis Evangelion was, I guess, subversive, um, but in like a really reasonable way, and in the most like. Well, I guess the most you could say the most Neon Genesis Evangelion way, but it's it's so ubiquitous their style that like sometimes you forget that this shit was new when it came out and it was unlike anything else. But yeah, this example right here, there's what nothing the there's nothing subversive about this. Anime has taught you that this scene is supposed to be funny and that the girl is supposed to slap the guy in the face, but instead they treat this scene like it's really happening to these characters in real life, and it's just kind of awkward and quiet before the girl has a perfectly reasonable response. Then, just to make sure that you got that they did it on purpose, they throw in this whole scene in the last episode where you get to see what Gundam would be like if it was just like every other stupid ass harem show, and it fucking sucks. Then the creator Creators realized that even though they solved anime forever back in episode 5, everyone was still making the same bullshit tired ass cliches. <laughs> so they released two entire god awful comic books about life in the harem Gundam universe and made a gazillion dollars off of their dumbass fans. I know Gundam, I, I, I know he's like playing around and all this stuff, right? Just word soup. But that's real shit actually. They solved the anime. What a great way to put it. Invented a new kind of anime book called a light novel, and they were super excited to prove both how smart they were and how much anime they had watched by exploring the medium through its meta. The first light novel that anybody read was The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya, and Kyoto Animation was so excited after reading it that he immediately made an anime out of it, which everybody loved. Haruhi Suzumiya was about this girl named The Melancholy, who- That's- this is actually crazy to think about, because this shit is legendary. I think most people, they look at this girl right here, was dead. like they look at her, and they, they think to themselves like, oh, just another like random Moe anime girl. Nah, dude, this is literally one of the most legendary icons in all of anime. Desperately trying to convince herself that she was living inside of an anime and that she was secretly God. Most of the jokes were about how even though all of the characters were supposed to represent anime cliches and the melancholy was convinced that they were anime cliches, the truth is that they were actually more complex and multidimensional characters who were putting on the facade of being dumbass teenagers in order to appease their autistic God. Trust me, it makes sense in context. Just like in Grandpa- This is actually great. I want to watch this now. Gundam, Haruhi also had a whole part where it showed what the world would be like if it was just some lame-ass slice-of-life anime, which also got turned into its own comic book and another anime series, cause fuck the entire concept of irony. The most self-indulgent, asinine, up-its-own-ass monument to the concept of meta in human history, and therefore wrote the Monogatari series. In the first chapter of Monogatari, this weightless crab girl staples the main character's cheeks together and calls herself a sundere, which is a word that people had heard before and therefore it made them laugh. However, the joke which Nisioi seen was trying trying to tell was apparently lost in the admittedly rather difficult translation, because the entire point is that Crab Girl isn't just some copy and paste anime cliché. She's actually a fully fleshed out character with serious trust issues stemming from her realistically troubled childhood, who acts aggressively towards the main character out of legitimate defensiveness, and then warms up to him after he proves himself to be trustworthy before forming an official, if questionably functional, relationship with him early into the story. This is really, like... In the process of him saying all this, you have to understand the subtext of what he's actually saying. This is a critique of the entire anime landscape. Because by, by itself, by nature, there are assumptions you can make as a person if, you, if you've like lived for at least 10 years on planet Earth. Then, just by a girl being assumed there to begin with, you can already assume a lot of other things about her. And the fact that, the fact that Digibro has to like Unless you go out of your way to make her a multifaceted, like, fully fleshed out character, then Asundere is a shallow character trait, shows just how pathetic and lazy all these other anime writers actually are. Because Asundere by itself should be able to communicate a lot of these things, such as someone having trust issues, some such as some someone needing to break out of their shell, and someone... Who, Finding it very difficult in themselves to open up to people, you know? And and that being a very long process. And as Sundare just by itself should communicate that. Literally just by itself. That should already be a part of the narrative just by the way the girl acts. Which a lot of the times it is, but it's really, really deep. And it 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 becomes really deep but really shallow in that it's 
understood on the surface that the writer of the anime is not writing her as a sundere because they want to they wanna do that for story purposes. They're writing her as a sundere so that they can get people to like make memes about her or make hentai about her or whatever. And then they can get, they could sell more copies. And, and in that way, the, the, like, the deeper meta of anime as a whole is, is, oh, I guess he, anime is getting lazy with its meta. I guess you could have just read the title and ignored everything I just said. Shallow and unhelpful that term can be when describing an actually realized character. So right, right, right. And what I'm, I'm going to add on to that and say, it's actually not shallow at all if people weren't lazy about it. But the, the simple fact that everyone is so lazy and pathetic at writing anime has, has tainted the definition of sundere, and it will for every other word and turn into a cliche that isn't a cliche because it works and because human brains don't necessarily change all that much from generation to generation, but because it turns into something else. It turns into uh, something that pulls you out of the whatever you're watching, ruins the immersion, and you go like, yeah, I... Um, it's very clear to me what they were trying to do here and what they were doing in the writing room and uh, why they did this in the first place. And you're thinking about all like the fan art that people are going to make. You're thinking about like the, the you know, the ships that they're going to have of her and people, people are going to be talking about on forums. And it kills your immersion of what you're actually watching. That's really the problem here. Sundari by itself is not a shallow thing. The anime community made it shallow because of how many pathetic people there are making anime. So Haruhi and Monogatari made a hundred million billion dollars and pretty soon there was a huge tidal wave of light novel authors crashing over Japan, with everyone hoping to cash in on the success of this whole meta thing. Somewhere in the midst of that maelstrom emerged The Little Sister Show, one of the four horsemen of the anime apocalypse. At first, The Little Sister Show was also about taking an anime cliche and making it realistic, by reminding everyone that in real life your little sister hates you and complains if you don't constantly do shit for her what's the actual name of this show i know he's like playing around and doing all this stuff and giving things weird names is it like orimo or something like that i think it... is it no way it is! How did I know that, bro? And it starts sinking in that maybe this show wasn't quite as self-aware as first thought. Then you fast forward to season two and what do you mean he broke up with Kuroneko and fucked his sister? I'm done. I'm fucking done. So now meta anime is suddenly fucking everywhere and all of it completely misses the point. You've got this scene. I wonder if... Huh, that's weird. Are these writers just... Are they... Are they incompetent at understanding why these things worked in the first place and they're just going off pattern recognition and going ah these tropes work let's try them in here let's try the meta thing in, in our anime or are they aware and they're doing it like they're being lazy but they know that they can be lazy and still make hella money like, what is it? How, how is this happening? As to the other girl, hey, stop practicing your sundere act and get over here. Except that the girl is actually literally a sundere. They're just pointing out that they did the thing that everyone else does, except they also want you to know that they did. Yeah, that's stupid. That's so stupid. Like, being meta and pointing it out only works. It's only cool if you can actually break out of that and, and move past that and do something special and do something unique. And, and not have her have have her be a more realized character. I get what he's saying. I get what he's saying, bro. I was in the middle of editing, and then I thought about it. the The way that anime is lazy with its meta is what causes all these anime reviewers to also be trash. If you watch one gig video, right, you're like, oh, that was good, good video, you know. But then you watch the next one, you're like, that's exactly the same as the last one. Like you made the same jokes, you had the same cutting himself off at this point the same exact thing whenever he said this he would say this thing and then try to be subversive but it really wasn't subversive he would say the the word culture a lot it's like it, you start to notice the patterns and you're like every single video he makes is the same video over and over and over again and oftentimes what he does is he'll point out like some stupid thing he's doing for a video right some cliche thing he's like oh welcome to another dumb anime review where the guy just rambles on about this thing that nobody really cares about and something like, like he'll criticize his own videos but then he'll go on to do that very thing and that's 
worse than just doing that thing to begin with. Because little kids who don't know any better, who, who are not thinking, will think that you're actually being subversive in some way, and they'll fall for it. And you're not, you're kind of deflecting any sort of criticism from the smarter part of your mind into the part of your mind that's actually making these videos because you're going, ah, it's okay because I know what I'm doing is wrong. I know what I'm doing is lazy and uh, it's it's not, you know, progressing myself in any way and I'm holding myself back and I'm, I'm slowly like, I'm not building a catalog of videos that are actually worth watching. I'm just like, I'm just cashing in basically. And it would be really cool if he instead took a more donkey like approach where uh you know a lot of his like reviews or like actually recently i watched that like donkey in paris video you know where it's like um you expect it to be something stupid in the beginning and he's kind of making it known like ah look all these videos do all like this stupid stuff these like really lazy uh poorly written like parody songs whatever but then he actually made it really good and at the end and he was like, you already know that I want the French fries. And then you think about it, and you're like, oh, wait, isn't French, French, like, and, 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 did I say French? Or did I say France? I, I don't even, whatever. I'm sorry for my continuous lapse of judgment. He really actually made it a good video. And he does that consistently, where he'll make some joke about how bad his videos are. And then later on in that video, you think it's going to go down that route and he'll make it better. He won't do that thing that he's making fun of. And that's when, that's when like the videos are really, really strong. When they're like really memorable. And Garnt doesn't do that at all. He'll like say something, like he'll poke fun. He'll like make sure he's the butt of the joke, right? He'll poke fun at something that his videos always do. Uh, because like it's memes in the community. Like he always like makes the same kind of video and he always does the same things in every video. He'll make that joke and then he'll then go on to do that same thing and he won't improve at all. And the point that I'm trying to make is, I think this happens with all these reviewers because anime as a whole does this. So it's like, yeah, dude, you want to fix the anime community? Dude, honestly, you want to fix the anime community? Bring back old Digibro. Like, go to his old videos, watch his old videos. Like, anything from before... Uh, honestly, before 2018, I'd say is pretty solid. Damn, Digibro used to, like, be, he used to be on top, man. That's why there's nothing subversive about this guy trying not to grab this girl's boobs, because his face still ends up in her panties anyways. They didn't change the basic meaning of the scene, they just called attention to the fact that they were doing it. It's like if someone was pissing in the middle of the street and everyone was staring at him, and then he yelled out, I'm pissing in the middle of the street! And everyone was like, oh, well at least he knows what he's doing, and went back to shit tweeting on their phones. Now, this isn't to say that it's all bad. Last season, we had this wacky, farcical version of a light novel about being trapped in a light novel about being trapped in a video game called Konosuba, and it was fucking hilarious, even if it wasn't necessarily making some deep commentary on the laziness of anime writing. But I, I, uh, I think it actually can. I think it can. I only watched the first season of Konosuba when it came out, but I think it can imply that when thinking about it retroactively. I thought it was a great show. I gotta watch season two. I know they're coming out with season three pretty soon, actually, but... I'm sick and tired of all these goddamn light novel adaptations that people treat like they're so fucking clever just because the author watched a bunch of anime and said, right. Hey guys, isn't anime totally like this? And then literally did the exact same thing that every other anime does. Stop it. It's, it's the fact that they're not self-aware. That's what pisses me off, is that they're not self-aware. And I had to deal with the, the social demons of having no friends, of being bullied, of having insomnia and feeling like shit all the time because I ate like shit. Oh, big fucking whoop. Everyone's been bullied. Everyone's had insomnia. Everyone's felt like shit. And for my next trick, I will effectively ruin 20% of all the anime you will ever watch. Look at their noses. Ta-da! You will now have to suffer being pulled out of the screen because you realize they have no noses like half these anime characters have no noses at all abracadabra now you notice it it's like breathing manually or blinking manually and now you have to share the suffering with me so um i hope uh 
I hope a lot of people, I hope that ruins a lot of people's days, actually. I wonder how many people, just one little comment, just pointing something out. It's so interesting how little things can do that. That's a power money can't buy. And for my next trick, I will shall pull out his lungs. <laughs> Oh man. Yo, dude. I swear the the Evangelion fan base, like the the sub fan base is the best. It's the best fan base out of all anime, the entire anime community. To, maybe okay, maybe One Piece just by like sheer numbers has like more amazing content, but I think percentage-wise, I think considering how small, which is not small, but relative to, you know, like the One Pieces, the Naruto's, the whatever, right? Considering how small Neon Genesis Evangelion actually is, it comes really, really close. Honestly, by like per capita, it's the best community, probably, in, in all of it. It's the best sub community. Like, this is, there's no point in doing any of this. The the chart Asuka is a charger, but at the same time, it's just so it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Something about it is just so. Something about it is so nostalgic. Even though I see all these memes for the first time, it feels like I I watched them like ten years ago, and I'm like, man, I found this meme again. This is great, dude. I fucking love the, the Evangelion community. Dude, Toonami was so cool, man. It was so cool. Next is of course, of course, Cowboy Bebop's the last. That's a legendary. And, and oh man, I remember like, because my, my parents, I didn't want to watch anime as a kid. Like, my parents were fine with me like playing on the Nintendo Wii and things like that, or even playing on the Xbox. But like, I would have the Wii on and I'd have the input, like, I'd have it on like some Wii Sports or whatever. And I would have the input change, and like if I hear my parents, like if I heard like the creaking upstairs, I'd immediately change it back to the week because I didn't want to, you know, fucking harem jutsu show up on screen. Luckily, I've, I've never actually been uh, in that situation where your parents walk in on you watching anime and they always walk in on the worst time. That's actually never happened to me. I guess I'm not a real anime watcher then, you know, I haven't gone through that rite of passage. Hey, I'm Hilary Duff from Lizzie McGuire, and you're watching Disney. Oh my god, Lizzie McGuire. I've seen like one episode or something like that, like a long time ago. Channel. Okay. <laughs> they took out the music too? That's hilarious. That's so awkward when you take out the music. Hey, I'm. Wait, that's actually the best part. Like, not even the drawings. The best part is just like their awkwardness in it and the fact that they don't have any vocal effects. I'm Hilary Duff from Lizzie McGuire, and you're watching Disney Channel. <laughs> <laughs> you need to move your body a little bit more. Oh, now that I think about it, they would zoom in on them while they were doing it. They would zoom in and they would go like this, and then they would. And then they'd have a different angle where they zoom in, and then it would just show their arm like doing that motion, and then it would zoom back out, and it would just be completed. It would just be done. But I, I think about it now, like, yeah, they never actually showed them drawing it properly. Okay. What's that? What's her name? It's that's so Ra It's from that's so Raven, but I forgot her name. Raven Simone, right? Hi, I'm Raven from that's so Raven, and oh, just Raven. You're watching Disney Channel. Okay, that's. That's great. Hi. I'm that's the the. There's no loop de loop. I'm Raven from That's So Raven, and you're watching Disney Channel. Why do they all do it so badly? I don't understand. Like, it's not that hard. I right, think about it for a second. Like, if I was doing it, I'd go like. 
year, year, done. Right, let me do it like facing the camera, right? Like that's the side of the head. Ear, ear, done. Or I guess that doesn't even show that side of the head. It just starts like halfway up the first ear, right? So it's like, what's the, why, why do all this? Hi, I'm Jake <laughs> Thomas from Lizzie McGuire. The way she started laughing at the end, that's hilarious. And you're watching Disney Channel. Hey, that's actually not that bad. Um, is my outline okay? Yeah, I think it feels good. Thanks. I'm like going way over here, is that cool? Please. There's no reason for him to draw all that at that part. And you're watching the Disney Channel. I'm really excited, okay. <laughs> whoa, whoa, what is all this? Okay, that was a three-eared mouse. Did anyone see that? Nah, dude, that, that, bro, she was, she was, her parents gave her Adderall before that one. Yo, what's up? I'm Orlando Brown from Nassau Raven, and you're watching Disney Channel. Well, that's the thing you work down, ladies, thank you. Guys, we're rolling. Very quiet, please. Man, that was some of my best work. Hi, I'm oh. Stephen Anthony Lawrence from He Disney. actually kind of tried it there. Stevens, and you're watching Disney Channel. You ready? And action. Who is this? I'm America Ferrera from Gotta Kick It Up, and you're watching Disney Channel. I've never seen her in my life. Nice job. And you're watching Disney Channel. <laughs> they drew that one too. If they're rotoing out the green, couldn't they have just put like a glow stick in there or something? Hi, I'm Kyle Massey from That's So Raven, and you're watching the Disney Channel. <laughs> okay, good job, Kyle. This time, don't hold the stick up in front of your face. Oh, she kind of, kind of, no. Good job. A little further to the right. You can... Looks like a, like a little, little Charmander. <laughs> It's her again! It's the legend! Hi, I'm Annalisa from That's So Raven, and you're watching the Disney... No. Hi, I'm Annalisa from That's So Raven, and you're watching Disney Channel. That was... Was that good? What? I didn't do the correction. Right. It was okay. <laughs> she keeps going! Oh. <laughs> All right. I just don't get it. Why do they only do two? Like, they... They've seen how this works before, right? They know it's not just two. They know that there's one circle, then two, then three, then four, then five, right? Kelly, and you're watching Disney Channel. Okay, Hillary Duff was really awkward. Bro, this looks like the Mario Kart game we used to play in Roblox. Dude, now to play my this gives me goosebumps. I wish I was there, bro. I wish I was there. Dude, imagine... Dude, imagine seeing all this, like, like, back then. Oh man, I was, I was like, how old was I? So I was eight years old. In 2008, I was eight years old. There's no way I would have been there, but man, that would have been legendary. Man, I wish I could see the comments. And they knew what they were doing right here with this one. They knew what they were doing with this one. Dude, that's correct. Of course, you see, notice how every time it even shows like a little bit of Zuko and, and Katara together. Like, everyone goes ape shit for that. That's so hype. If, like I think about it in my head, I'm like, imagine I never saw the, I guess like the second half of season three, right? Imagine I never saw that. And then I saw this trailer. 
I'd be losing my mind, bro. <laughs> Yeah, dude, straight up, like, I'm a cringe part of the community. In the same way I complain about anime fans, I can totally see people complain about me the same way. The way that I get hype over this shit, th this isn't going to stop me at all from shitting on anime fans and bullying them at all. But, you know, I get it when people do it to me. Who uses their middle finger to touch something? But this is very important to the plot. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> hmm? Hey, what the fuck? You got a fucking problem? Hey, nah, this is the kind of anime that I love, bro. Uh -huh. This Okay, I think this is a visual. I'll pound the living shit out of you, you dumbass freaky tourist. <laughs> <laughs> How is he the tourist? <laughs> I'll knock your fucking head off. <laughs> <laughs> he's talking, he's talking like, like the fucking chat GPT, dude. Like a text-to-speech. You want more, huh? So I had people in Jersey for me. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with this dude? I can't even react, bro. I'm so I'm so enthralled by what's happening, bro. I want to watch more. I've never seen someone so angry and calm at the same time. I'll knock your fucking head off. <laughs> That's not how niggas sound, Japan. Okay. I guess he got the username, the Animist One. He does some cool shit, but it's like it's really hard to differentiate. Like the the making of videos versus the actual like stop motion like watching like little short videos, which is like really annoying because there's only like, those are the only videos that I actually want to watch. And if you differentiated between them, it would make it a lot easier. And uh, I could only choose to watch those videos. This is literally why I'm not even subscribed to him anymore. Otherwise, I still would be because it's literally it's like spam. It's like quality over quantity. Don't just spam videos all the time once every week. You know, most of these videos are not worth watching. A lot of the, like the behind the scenes, like the making of could be posted like on your Patreon, like for private people, because that's not only a benefit for you because you get more Patreon subs, but that's also a benefit for the viewer because it keeps that magic intact where all they see is like all this stuff. And if you drop a stop motion every week, which like you can, instead of showing people the recipe of how it's made and everyone's like, oh, that's reasonable because it's not, it doesn't feel special anymore. It's like you become one of these appreciated like 2D anim animation channel like holy shit look at how like fucking look at how much work he puts in and it's like all all quality uh, all quality over quantity and like you'd become a lot more respected if you did that kind of thing I think you know of course there's like some really popular videos you have which is like which shows how you made the stop motion but yeah no nah, I think um a lot of a lot of these videos can just disappear off your channel just go on like b behind a Patreon paywall or something like that and it'd be a lot better for you.